Welcome everyone to today's episode of the Lindsay Elmore Show. Creative expression is extraordinarily good for your mental health. It allows you to explore ideas, maybe helping you to flip more out of your limbic system and into that prefrontal cortex where you can let go of irrational thoughts. It also gives a strong voice to the person who is creating art or music or writing or painting or whatever that creative expression is. It also simply makes you feel good. It gives you something that you can enjoy and this positive feedback loop can then be felt in other areas of your life. My guest today is Dr. Norman Rosenthal. He is a Georgetown psychiatry professor, and he has a new book all about how poetry can help us to heal and bring joy to our lives. There has been many, many poems written about mental health, and they convey lessons about how we can be better adapted I'd like to start today's show by reading a poem of The Sun and Her Flowers by Rupi Carr. When the world comes crashing at your feet, it's okay to let others help pick up the pieces. If we're present to take part in your happiness when your circumstances are great, we are more than capable of sharing your pain. Poems like this remind us that it's okay to ask for help. We are never alone. We are always a part of a community of people who can help us when we're at our lowest, just as they can help us when we're at our highest. Let's get to the show. Welcome to The Lindsay Elmore Show, a podcast for people who deserve to be healthy with honest, open and enlightening conversations with doctors, thought leaders, creatives, and spiritual gurus, you'll walk away with simple and tangible tips and tricks that allow you to live your healthiest life so you can pursue your dreams, overcome obstacles, and leave your mark. Norman Rosenthal is a clinical professor of psychiatry at Georgetown Medical School. And he was a psychiatrist who first described seasonal affective disorder and pioneered the use of light and its treatment of the disorder during his 20 years of work at the National Institute of Mental Health. He has researched other innovative psychiatric treatments and is the author of several books, including the New York Times bestseller, Transcendence, Healing and Transformation Through Transcendental Meditation, as well as the national bestseller, Supermind. He currently maintains a private clinical and coaching practice in the Maryland suburbs of Washington, D.C., His work has earned him national and international attention in the world of psychiatry and psychology, as well as in the media. His newest book, Poetry Rx, How 50 Inspiring Poems Can Heal and Bring Joy to Your Life, is out now. Dr. Norman Rosenthal, welcome to the Lindsay Elmore Show. Thank you, Lindsay. Lovely to be here. I am very excited to chat with you today. Way back in my pharmacy school days, I thought I wanted to be a psychiatric pharmacist, and I worked in at San Francisco General Hospital, which is the county and the city hospital where... Unfortunately, all of the people who are having mental breaks get brought because it's so sad for people with mental illness. If there's no good hospital, a lot of people end up incarcerated and going down this path that is just no good. And I eventually decided I wasn't built to be a psychiatric pharmacist for two reasons. Number one, I... I couldn't stop myself from pouring 
all of my energy into the hopes that patients with severe mental illness, severe schizophrenia, severe bipolar disorder would get better. And I remember I had one patient that came in and she was there at the very beginning of my six or eight week long rotation. And she and I were buds and I thought we were close. And fast forward to the very last day of the rotation and she comes back in with another psychotic break and she had no recollection of who I was and it it really hurt me deep down and I just decided you know what this is not my field the other reason that I decided that psychiatric pharmacy was not the field for me was because I saw patients in need of help and instead Instead of really working on the root causes, the nutrition, the stress, the housing, the the employability, it was just here, have some olanzapine, here, have some, have some Seroquel, have some, have some Haldol. And I recognized that these patients are being put on medications that make them feel out of their own mind to the point where they just can't take it. The drugs are not what people need. And so you are a psychiatrist and you have written several New York Times bestselling books, Transcendence, Healing Through Transformation, Through Transcendental Meditation. And that touches my heart on a very deep level because my grandmother, who passed away just in January was the first person in my life to teach me transcendental meditation as a small child. And you will have a new book now, Poetry Rx, How 50 Inspiring Poems Can Heal and Bring Joy to Your Life. And just a few weeks ago on the show, I read a piece of a poem that happened to come on as a a guided meditation while I was sitting with my grandmother on her deathbed. My mother was in the room and I recognized that this moment of listening to this poem be read aloud was the actual manifestation of love in action. It seems like such a mundane thing. It's me and my mom sitting in a room with my grandmother who is asleep. And yet it was so much more than that. So why don't you begin for us by reading a poem that might help to heal us and bring joy to us? I would love to do that. Thank you for that kind explanation. Thank you for that kind introduction. I would love to read you Hope is the Thing with Feathers by Emily Dickinson. Hope is the thing with feathers that perches in the soul and sings the tune without the words and never stops at all and sweetest in the gale is heard, and sore must be the storm that could abash the little bird that kept so many warm. I've heard it in the chillest land and on the strangest sea, yet never in extremity it asked a crumb of me. Mm. Another piece of the Another piece of the poem that I didn't read on the podcast, but was a part of the poem that came on when my grandmother was in the room. This is Sarah Blondin's words. To our courageous, beautiful selves, to the purity of who we are, the mighty force we were born as, to the vulnerable, most magnificent heart in our chest, to the world of wonder shrouded in every soul, to the simple, the plain, ordinary life I get to live, I would like to say thank you. 
I would like to share my most sincere gratitude and love and appreciation to the simple, the plain, the ordinary life I get to live. One of my one of my college professors is a poet. And I I never quite got it. I didn't quite get how poetry could speak to us on so many levels. Why have you decided to include poetry as a part of your patient care, as your self-care, as your care for your friends and family? Why poetry as a medium? 